Tiny Frontiers is a 162-page sci-fi RPG by Alan Barr, using the so-called Tiny D6 system that he popularized with Tiny Dungeon 2nd Edition. Tiny Frontiers was released in 2017 as one of the stretch goals for the Tiny Dungeon Kickstarter, but is presented as a standalone RPG with all the rules you need to run a game. In the few short years since Tiny Dungeon was published, the Tiny D6 rule system has blossomed with different settings, even to the point that it has earned its own little section on drive-through RPG. Despite the fact that I've already covered the Tiny D6 rules in a previous video, I'm going to cover them again for this review of Tiny Frontiers, just so you don't have to click around on my channel. The mechanics on Tiny Frontiers is simple. At default, you throw 2D6 to make a check or save. A 5 or 6 is a success. Everything else is not a success. In cases where you are at a so-called disadvantage, you roll 1d6. In cases where you have an advantage, such as from a trait or attacking with weapon mastery, or if you're using Xenotech, you get to throw 3d6. In combat, you have the abstracted concept of close, near, and far, where it is all relative to the distance to the enemy. This removes a lot of the spatial tactics that you might find in most RPGs, simplifying combat movement for the sake of expediency. Each player gets two actions per turn. You can burn an action to focus your next turn's attack, as well as evade, take cover, or put down suppressing fire. If you get hit during combat, it's always one point of damage, whether you're using light melee, heavy melee, or ranged weapons. The GM can also adopt the optional rule of basing damage on the type of weapon used wherein damage dealt or received can be up to four points of damage in one hit. When you're down to zero HP, you get 2d6 to recover, and then on your next turn, 1d6, after which you are truly dead. Teammates can revive you at any point here. Xenotech is rare alien tech that comes in two flavors, simple and complex. Simple Xenotech is used by anyone, but the complex variety requires a trait or some amount of in-game time to study and decipher before using. There is no list of Xenotech in this book, and the author only gives 10 examples. Xenotech is intended to be like a consumable magic item, depleted after one or several uses. There is an optional system of experience points where players earn 1 to 3 XP per session. With this XP, they're able to buy extra hit points, a new proficiency or mastered weapon, or a new trait. There are 5 short steps to making a character in Tiny Frontier. Choose your heritage. There are 15 races, or heritages, to choose from, which is surprisingly rich for an otherwise bare-bones game that has no native setting. These each come with a starting number of hit points and one or two traits. Choose three more traits from the list of 48 in the book. These traits are the entry point for a lot of emergent gameplay and unique possibilities for players. The trait psionics branches out to five separate disciplines that each have four powers of their own, and characters with cybernetics can choose two out of nine particular features. Select a weapon group to be proficient in. There are just four choices, light melee, heavy melee, light ranged, and heavy ranged. You get to throw 2d6 when attacking with a weapon in your proficiency and 3d6 when attacking with a particular weapon that you've mastered. Then you choose a name and a short belief statement. There is no list of enemies to speak of in the book except for three examples. You're provided with the standard tiny d6 enemies chart that lays out the number of HP of any of six tiers of enemies. Then there is the table of 11 enemy types that you can roll on. Then you roll on several of the six tables to create a sci-fi location for your adventure determine the type of planet, settlement, and enemy group. By far the most complex portion of this game are the possibilities for starship creation. The book starts off simply enough by providing four chases types, the small striker, medium-sized scout, large cruiser, and largest class. But then it starts getting more complex with the subsystems that you have to consider for your ship under the categories of sensor, weapon, defense, and movement. Depending on your ship's chases class, you get to choose one or several system upgrades by class. There are 31 such optional subsystems to choose from. As far as ship-to-ship -ship combat, ships merely take damage to their structure point pool, not to individual systems, and they recover one point of structure per in-game hour of downtime. Half of the book is compromised of 12 micro settings, each written and styled by a different author. Just as in Tiny Dungeons, the presentation and granularity of detail varies wildly. I found that every last one of these in Tiny Frontiers contains a kernel of a great idea for a one-shot or campaign, but it's challenging to absorb the material since they are all formatted completely differently. I'll give just one con and one pro for this book, just to stay in line with the spirit of brevity. 
con. The micro settings should be standardized. Maybe the contributing authors shouldn't have to conform to one single template for their thing, but maybe they should be able to choose from three different templates that are more rigorous, proven, and polished. It would help a lot. Pro. This is truly a pick up and go sci-fi RPG. I'm personally fond of the rules light RPGs and I really like sci-fi, so there you go. This game is almost the lightest you can get with an RPG while still retaining dice. So there you have it, Tiny Frontiers. Let me know what your experiences have been with this game and with Tiny D6 in general down in the comments. And thank you for watching. This is Dave signing off. See ya.